This week, we interview Stephen Bailey from s and Brands and the founder of Cornelius & Anthony. In the Debonair Ideal segment this week, we'll highlight some cigar lines and provide you with some information about all the skinny details, right? The blend, the size offerings, uh, and run some corrections from previous shows where I messed up. So we're going to get it right and talk about some, uh, some interesting lines. Not necessarily new, but uh, just some information on lines that are out there. As with IPCPR 2016, tons and tons of stuff on the market. In the stories of the week... Some new Tatawahe with a twist, some rare Tatawahe, a Candela for the Irish in us all, Joe Hollywood reviews some La Aurora, and so much more on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from Villiger North American Studios, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. to you by M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays a detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, the M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, for the cigar is a way of life. Punch Cigars. For more information, check them out at www.punchcigars.com. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, provides smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of the perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the quality and construction that he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Signature line, Azan, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran uses a seed dehumidor approach as all of their tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Premium Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadori, and we're broadcasting live from Rhode Island where we're getting ready for a snowstorm tomorrow. Mm. Yay for snow in, in March, right, everyone? Mm. No. <laughs> it's oh, terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Here in studio, to my right, Joe Hollywood joins us. Welcome, Joe. How are you? What's going on, dude? We're cutting our, uh, our cigar of the show. I'm still finishing up on my, one of my earlier ones that I was smoking a second for a review. Um, Joe's getting that lit up. You, Mr. Uh, Rain Man over there has his already lit up. He's on point. What's up, boys? It's definitely a cigar. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Rain Man, Mr. Joe D is here. Welcome. Sporting your Irish today. Yeah. That's all good. It's Mix all it up good. a little throwback to my hockey team and uh, yeah, air it out. It's, it's cold. Today, it is. <laughs> speaking of the <laughs> weather, holy crap! We're about to get 60. smoked. Last week was like what fifty four. Yeah. Now yesterday was eleven. It's terrible. It should be outdoor smoking weather at this point, but it's should. not. Well, I guess in New England, it's it's always outdoor smoking weather mm. if you live in New England. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, let's go through our uh, stogie that we're smoking this week. Stogie of the week uh, is the Umbagog. By Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Do you guys know the story behind this behind this smoke? Negative. Uh, it was actually released uh, at IPC PR 2016, which were a lot of things, as I'm finding, uh, that even with the great coverage that we had of IPC PR, there were so many releases that to get in front of that, uh, the date, uh, the what, what do they call it, date, the date? Uh, a pre-release date Pre- for the f- what, FDA? There's a word for Predicate it. date. Predicate date, thank you. Predicate is the word I was looking for. Rain man. To get ahead of the predicate date. <laughs> definitely predicate. Definitely Hendrigan. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> That's my problem. I should have went to Hendrickin. So we get ahead of the predicate date. They're making all these releases, release them to stores to say, yes, they're on the market, right? Um, and uh, we've, we've had a tough time really just keeping tabs on all these releases because there are there's so many. And they're, they're not, I don't think they're getting the marketing that they deserve because they're still trickling out. So you don't want to like release the two stores and then do this great marketing buzz because like where are they? Um, so some are coming into retails. I actually picked up the Umbagog, Umbagog next door, which is the lake, that uh, favorite lake that Steve Saka likes to, uh, to go fishing at. I was going to cover this in Debonair Ideal, but since they were next door, like literally mo- when you guys were coming out of next door to come here to do the show, I was purchasing them because uh, John pulled me aside as I walked in. He's like, dude, I got something for you. Awesome. I'm like, I was just talking about because I love the Onco Largo and the this is the Robusto that we're smoking, um, which is a 5x52 Robusto. No, is that right? No, that's a different one. Sorry. It is a Robusto. Hold on. I'll tell you, there's a, there was two sizes next door. And um, there is actually a Corona Gorda, a Robusto Plus, which is a, this is a 6x52. Uh, the Toro Toro, which is also a 6x52. How is that possible? Hold on. That's what it says here on Cigar Coop. It says there's a Robusto Plus that's 6x52. And then it says there's a Toro Toro that's 6x52. Mm. How is that possible? Because the Toros I have are definitely not this size. Right. This to me looks like maybe a 5.5 or a 5x52. Would be my guess, um, and so the MSRP on these is a couple dollars less than the Micarita because the wrapper that's used on here is exactly the same. I'm told the blend is exactly the same, except the wrappers just didn't like pass the quality control for Micarita. So he's selling almost. Uh, he's probably gonna, Steve's going to hate me for saying this. They're like Micarita seconds. Now seconds have a definitely negative connotation, but basically Steve is like, hey, there's the wrapper on these like. Just didn't make the cut for me, Carita, so I rolled a couple of different sizes, and he's making them available in bundles for like a couple dollars less per stick. Mm. So I'm very curious to try the Toro size, which I so greedily put aside for myself because I love the Onco Largo, which is like the Toro size in the Mikarita. That was my number one cigar of the year for 2016. Uh-huh. So I was excited to see these in retailers. Um, it's nice to buy bundles at a couple dollars cheaper. Um, I'm assuming it's going to smoke the same. Uh, as the Micarita. I don't know if you guys have had the Micarita before. If you don't, you have a point of... Uh, All the time. Two, okay, so you have a point of reference, so we'll see how that goes. I'm actually finishing one a cigar that I'll talk about a little later. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a broadleaf offering uh, from Steve Saka, Micarita. Uh, this one's the Umbagog, and uh, that's our cigar of the week. Uh, now, uh, Rayman, the, your, the guest today um, is one of your cohorts, is that correct? Hopefully soon to be. Uh, okay. So why don't you introduce your soon-to-be cohort? <laughs> Mr. Stephen Bailey, owner of... Hey, uh, folks. How you doing, brother? I'm great. I'm, I don't know if I've ever been a cohort before, but I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been called worse. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's a term of endearment. So, Stephen, welcome to the show. Um, tell us a little bit about s and Brands and uh, Cornelius and Anthony. Well, s and Brands is a company my father and I formed back in the uh, early 90s. And the intent to sell tobacco products uh, that we created here. Uh, Dad's a large farmer, was at one point the largest one in the state of Virginia. And I think he had come to the conclusion that uh, it was time to... to uh, expand the business and you know as family grows older they either hang around or they leave and I was at a point I was ready to go and I think dad was trying to figure out how to keep me around so um, we started a company making cigarettes with the baca that was grown on our farm and uh, that business is still running today despite the best efforts of uh, the government and competition and um, in the early well I'd say 20. 20- 11. It was time to expand the business again, and we decided to get into premium cigars. And we formed a company called Cornelius and Anthony, and um, it's been a whirlwind and a lot of fun ever since. And when did your family start in uh, tobacco, Steve? My family's been in where I'm sitting right now within a five mile radius of here. We've been in tobacco since 1866. Wow. Wow. 
That's a lot of history. All and, history. And so when did the cigar business, first cigar business, uh, officially start for you and, and your dad? Is that Was that the first foray into cigars? Yeah, the, the, the first foray into cigars was 20... I want to say we were at IPCPR with Cornelius and Anthony in 2014. Maybe it was 13. I lose track of time. But, um, yeah, we, we started with a product that, uh, that was made in the Dominican. Uh, we weren't real happy with it. We decided to, to retire the line. Uh, we came out with another product that uh, we weren't happy with either and decided to change manufacturers at that point. And since... We've been doing business with uh, Eric Espinosa out of the zone in Nicaragua mm -hmm. and um, also doing business with Sandy down at El Titan, uh, mm -hmm. the bronze in Miami. So we've got two fantastic manufacturers that we're working with, and it's uh, it's been good. They've been now, wait, you very have, good folks to you work have with. You have tobacco farms in Virginia, correct? Correct, yes. Now, uh, from what I understand, from what I've read, that the tobacco plants that are used for cigarette tobacco are a completely different type of plant than are used for cigars. Is that, uh, I'm sure there's more to the story there, but is that, uh, and on the surface, true? That is accurate, yes. I gotcha. So you couldn't use your own farm. Have you ever, like, talked with your dad about doing, uh, growing your own um, cigar tobacco? Yes, we're working on it now, as a matter of fact. That's awesome. Yeah. So does um, with the Virginia tobacco? Have you like smoked any samples, or give our listeners a little insight into what it's like to grow and in and, and harvest tobacco in in Virginia? It's very similar to what you'll see in some of the other countries. I mean, we're probably a little more modernized here. Um, you know, we do things in in rows of four, where you know, in a lot of foreign countries, it's in rows of ones, and we've got bigger tractors and and uh, water implements and but generally speaking it's it's the same process that you would see in the Dominican or Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so tell us about the uh, the offerings that you have today from uh, Cornelius and Anthony in terms of cigars. Well, we offer we're offering full brands. Uh, Cornelius is being manufactured at El Titan with Sandy. Uh, our other three brands, Meridian, Venganza, and Daddy Mac, are all made by Eric Espinosa at Lazona, then in Nicaragua. I got you. Um, go ahead, Joe. I'm just curious on the, uh, Ed read about the uh, Meridian. There was a reboot on the Meridian, if you could speak on that, if possible. Yeah, we, you know, that I mentioned that a little earlier. We, we had some product made, and, you know, we thought we were happy with what we had, and we weren't uh, ultimately very happy with it. So so we basically ditched the, the manufacturer and, and went back to uh, Eric and uh, worked on a, a new but old blend together and uh, came back out with Meridian, and it's uh, it's been a, a much, much finer product since uh, Eric made it for us. Appreciate that attention to, de to detail and uh, very much look forward to trying all four. Yeah, it's the, they're fantastic products. Um, I'm uh, I'm enjoying a, a prototype right now from Lazona, but uh, yeah, we, we smoke a lot of cigars around here. Nice. <clears throat> we do too. We what's the um, what's the wrappers on the different cigars? Mo most of the wrapper is is Ecuadorian. Um, you know, I think that seems to be a that seems to be a, a trend in the industry. Is you know, Ecuador grows a beautiful wrapper in the cloudy weather. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it's it's kind of hard to come across uh, good broadleaf quality stuff mm -hmm. now. So much demand for it in the market. It's just one of the things actually. That we're working on here because we find it's important to to uh, have access and a consistent quality supply of tobacco, and you know that's that's kind of hard to come by. And, and you had mentioned last year so many new brands on the market. I think a lot of tobacco was used up trying to get to IPCPR last year. Uh, I, I agree, and yeah, I, just to speak to the um, Connecticut broadleaf, we talk about so many cigars today. They're using Connecticut Broadleaf. Uh, certainly, Tatawaha and my father have put out a ton, as well as uh, Steve Saka and Nick Melillo from their respective companies have put out their own lines in Connecticut Broadleaf uh, and many others as well. So I can see where that can be somewhat hard to get if you're not. I mean, Nick's been his family and himself in the business of Connecticut Broadleaf forever. So um, that's interesting. So your uh, the wrappers are mostly Ecuadorian Connecticut. Is that is that right, Steve? 
No, m- most of it's Ecuadorian. We've, we're also using some Brazilian wrapper. Uh, our Daddy Mac product is uh, is a Brazilian wrapper, and it's um, and that's that's probably been one of our most well received cigars so far. It, it's um, it's done extremely well in the market. I like the Brazilian. Uh, is it Brazilian Matafina? Uh, Barano, Bahano is is the way it's been pronounced to me, and I'm, gotcha. you know my my Spanish is not the best, but uh, mine, mine neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you have more questions for for Steve. Well, we certainly can't hold uh, being a Dolphins fan against you. That's a uh, big. Football. Well, we can, but <laughs> <laughs> we might. Okay, so I I, love, I, I do. I love I guess. to t- I love to tell everybody I'm a Dolphins fan because you know at some point in the next hundred years we're going to win and I'll be damned if somebody's going to call me a Fairweather fan. That's there it. Get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Courtney Smith? Well, I thought everybody knew Courtney. Um, Courtney is Courtney is really the backbone of of what we're doing now. She she. Um, she came on board a couple of years ago to, to help get me pointed in the right direction. Fortunately, um, she's got a lot of experience, came from retail, uh, owned her own stores. Her, her brother and father both own stores now. Uh, she worked for La Polina, uh, was a very uh, integral part of, of their product making. And, uh, bless you. Bless you. Thank bless you. you. Sorry. Excuse uh, me. Thank you their introductions into the market and you know she's kind of a marketing genius so um thankful she's on board and helping us point this thing in the right direction mr todd vance as well yes todd todd came on a couple of years ago too he's uh i guess some of you may know todd he, he comes from aj fernandez originally but he's um he's out on the road every day trying to sell cigars um and you know that's part of this business that people don't understand maybe it's a lot of work involved with getting cigars to stores and and keeping people uh provided with product and never running out and that type of thing and he's got his hands full we've got a good set of brokers that help us out there um so todd is is a big part of what we do nice Steve, what cigars do you like to smoke uh, outside of your own brands? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's arrogant to say this, but I really don't smoke anybody else's cigars per se. I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of like what we're doing, and you know, I've tried other stuff, but generally speaking, I'm I'm in the process now of making a, a, a product that that I particularly uh, have a lot of passion for, and we've been working on it for a couple of years, and I've just about got it the way I want it. We'll be uh, turning it loose at uh, the IPCPR. It's kind of a special edition product. Um, but generally speaking, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much smoking my own stuff. Well, and especially as you have <clears throat> your own lines in four, uh, as far as I've counted so far. And if you're working on new ones, it's kind of hard to have the smoking time to smoke other people's stuff is what I found speaking with people who are blending uh, cigars. So, um, Steve, where in your line would you put a newer cigar smoker that like hasn't smoked really any cigars before, or maybe just kind of dabbled? Like, where in your lines would you put a new cigar smoker? I would, I would definitely send them to Cornelius. That that's the product that's made at El Titan. Um, it's kind of a smoker's product, and you know, for the the person that hasn't tried a cigar before, may just be dabbling with it. it it's a much it's, a, in my opinion, a milder product than, say, the Venganza or even the Meridian. Um, you know, it, it's a good place to start. It's more of a morning cigar for me. Gotcha. <clears throat> Where would you put the some of your other uh, cigars in terms of smoking profile and characteristics? Like, are some really heavy cigars? Um, are there some that are medium-bodied? Uh, uh, like, where do you uh, place some of your other lines? Yeah, m- medium bodied is is a Cornelius. So you you get into more of a medium full in the other three lines. V- Venganza is a, is a lot of pepper. You know, that's some people like that, some don't. Um, I kind of I kind of rank them in strength from Cornelius being the the medium strength up to Venganza and even Meridian. And you know, some people tell me Meridian's a stronger product too. Um, so. Daddy Mac is more of a, 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 a medium full product, and it is a product that uh, that we've had the most success with so far. And it may be because timing on the market, because 
you know, I have to remind people our cigars have only been on the market for a year, and and that's Cornelius and Daddy Mac was May of last year when it was introduced, and Venganza was at the show, and Meridian was actually the first of November, latter part of November before it made it to retail. So uh, we're still a, a pretty green company out here. And uh, you said, Steve, that you have uh, new lines that you're working on as well. Um, uh, with the FDA looming and threatening to, of course, tax uh, new lines coming out, uh, tax in a looser sense of the word, uh, how are you planning on getting those cigars uh, to market and what's your strategy with, with FDA? Well, un- understand that there's no such thing as a new cigar anymore, okay? Uh, everything that's on the market today is is really been based off of a historical blend. And one of the things that that we've had the, the pleasure of, of is doing business with El Titan, and, you know, they've got a long history uh, in the industry. They've got grandfather products. So, you know, that's really allowed us to tap into uh, a big inventory of blends that Sandy's had, and that's allowing us to, to get products, you know, that quote-unquote new, but they're, you know, they're really blends that, that were developed quite some time ago, and, you know, we're just using that catalog or inventory to our benefit. Yeah, that's interesting. I think with the <clears throat> with the FDA regulations, depending which way they go, we may see a lot more of that, certainly as we talk to uh, cigar manufacturers. And it's nice to see that the larger factories, such as El, El Titan de Bronze, are willing to work with uh, smaller newcomers to the cigar industry as well. I think that's that's important to keep our industry going. And give oh, us, I could, uh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, Sandy is great to work with, and she... You know, she really has an understanding of, of what the cigar smoker out there is looking for and the quality that comes out of her factory is second to none. I, I visited a lot of factories. I've tried to do business with some other folks in the industry. And frankly, Eric Espinosa and Sandy Cobras are two of the, the trustworthy people in this industry. Um, what is your distribution uh, strategy, Steve? Are in, in, in distribution and marketing as well. You, you spoke that you hire uh, someone to do marketing, and I've seen the the full gamut. And it's kind of like different strokes for different folks, right? Like some people do no events and do other things for marketing. Some people, like Bellity, for example, right, all in on events, and that really works for him. And then I talk to other people, and they're like somewhere in between based on region. Um, so what what's your strategy for bringing your cigars to market? Events, you know, it's about events. Uh, it's about advertising. You know, it's important to get the name out there. But one of the challenges that every manufacturer faces, uh, maybe not so much some of the, the bigger companies, but certainly the medium and smaller companies, we all face the challenge of, number one, finding space in a humidor, mm-hmm. and number two, getting the product in the hands of a consumer. And to me, one of the best ways to do that is at events. And, you know, we've tasked our folks uh, a certain number of events this year. It's it's pretty important, we feel like, to ultimately grow the business. We've got to put cigars in the hands of smokers that uh, haven't tried us before. So uh, events is the best place to do that. Are you traveling to uh, many of these events, Steve? Some I do, some I don't. Uh, I've got actually going to be up in the Northeast next week. Uh, we were talking earlier, hoping that snow will be gone by that time. Um, but yeah, I, I travel to some of the events. I'm, uh, of course, I'm at IPCPR every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing events next week in the Northeast. I'll be at uh, Big Smoke in Miami in April. So you know, I I do as much as I can do. I, I would love to be at all the events, but you know, somebody's got to make sure that the checks get signed around here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So where, uh, which shops uh, are you visiting in the Northeast? Uh, good question. I don't have the exact list here with me at the moment. Sorry. Um, I'll be happy to send it to you, though. Sure. Yeah, we'd love. To, if you're in the area, please, you know, stop by. That'd be awesome. Ab- absolutely. <clears throat> so how do you, how do you structure uh, your event, Steve? It, it pretty much I leave it up to uh, to Todd. Um, you know, but the brokers are certainly involved, and you know we. We tend to do certain promotions. It requires purchase because you can't give a, give away anything anymore in the cigar industry, mm. according to the FDA. Um, but that's that's typically how it works. Is we set up and you know we make products available and 
run some promotional numbers on, on things during the events and try to advertise it and get as many folks in there to try cigars as we can. <clears throat> Joe, Joe D. I certainly applaud the uh, the grassroots attempt uh, pushing the product, and the name is absolutely getting out there and gaining steam. Uh, get back to Todd Vance and his tireless work ethic. Kind of curious about the uh, your first Cuban experience at a resort. There, it sounded <laughs> like a pretty good uh, pretty good story to air out. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was. I, I mean, historically, at, at that point in time, I was probably in my twenties, and I. I was in the Bahamas and I, I, I found a Cuban cigar and I said, oh my God, I got to try this. You know, it's the, the old I'm not supposed to have it thing. So I bought the cigar. I, I took a few drags off of it, you know, and it, it was so bad. I literally put the cigar out in the ashtray in the hallway there. I think I forget what I paid for, some astronomical number. And I just said, well, you know, hopefully somebody somewhere can do a better job than this. And that was your experience in Cuba, Steve? No, I was in the Bahamas at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there tends to be a lot of f- faux Cubans in the surrounding islands, certainly. But it all plays into, you know, the brand of the Cornelius and Anthony and, you know, migrating to uh, where you're at today and uh, the experience making, you know, the most enjoyable experience for the smoker. And it sh- I'm sure it shaped you uh, to where you're at today. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to us, it's, it's really all about time. You know, we, we're all fighting the same thing, and that's time. And smokers only have so much of it, and, you know, we believe it's our job to provide the best product we can for, for that person to use during their special time. So we work hard here every day to make sure we're, we're turning out good products and things that people want to smoke. Steve, uh, amongst your lines, um, you have different sizes, obviously, across the lines. Um Talk about some of the different sizes and then which sizes sell better in different regions. I, I love to ask this question. It's kind of like a unscientific scientific study uh, where cigar manufacturers will tell me, well, this size does better here. And I don't know if there's any continuity uh, across it all. So which, for you, which sizes sell best and in which regions? Here's what I'm seeing. Um, and, and we've been actually looking at some of that data recently because we've got some decisions to make. And you know, the, the big rage was the huge mm-hmm. ring, ring gauge cigars, the 60 and 70 ring gauge cigars, and everybody had to have it. And, you know, the, the interesting part is that those cigars, uh, those sizes are not doing as well as they were. And I, I really lend that to the economy. I, I think consumers' perception is for X amount of dollars, I'm getting more tobacco, so I'm going to buy the bigger ring gauge. And um, personally, I, I looked at that and I said, well, you know, uh, we need to obviously provide consumers what they want. But since the economy started improving, we're really seeing our Corona Gordas take off. I mean, it's almost like people, well, have a little extra money in their pocket and you know, maybe a little tired of fighting a huge cigar, maybe not the amount of time that they need to enjoy in it. And they've gone to the Corona Gorda, and that's really where we're seeing our sales growth at. Love that size. Absolutely. Will that be your primary uh, mm-hmm. primary plan of attack for uh, New England specifically and some of the other regions that you're not in it currently? I'm sorry. I, I, I misunderstood what you said. Is that, uh, is that one of your target, you know, target sizes and kind of scale back from the larger ring gauge moving forward? Some of the areas that you're not in already like New England? Well, we, you know, the, the Corona Gorda is certainly will be a staple for, for everything that we introduce. It, it, it's already a part of all of our other size, um, excuse me, brands. Uh, and we're probably going to scale back on the, the larger ring gauge and some of the newer stuff that we're doing. Nice. Traditionally, in, in the, the Northeast, especially in wintertime, mm-hmm. obviously people gravitate towards shorter sizes. But then some uh, cigar representatives and, and manufacturers will tell me, well, 60 ring, like New, Eng- New England's a good place for 60 ring, too. <laughs> and it just depends on the store. It's, it, it's so weird. I think that me personally, Steve, over time, reviewing hundreds of cigars a year across the team in, in the past over four years, I think 60 rings come a long way uh, in, in terms of flavor. I think it all, also just comes down to really smoking time, right? And uh, Steve, you kind of hit on that, right? People may have been buying a 60 ring because it was the most value, but it wasn't the, the right amount of time they wanted to spend with a cigar. 
and now they're going towards something that's more like an hour smoke rather than a two-hour smoke, and they're getting a lot more enjoyment, and that could be another reason why increased sales in Corona Gorda, which is a, a, a favorite size of mine as well. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> Question. Hollywood, you've been quiet over here. You've um, been, yeah, you've no. Lost in your, your umbagog. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Steve, it's Joe. I just wanted to ask you a question. looks like according to your website, you're in about 43 states out of 50, correct? Is that correct? That's that that changes daily, but it sure. sounds like a good number yep, to it's me. A, it's, <laughs> a, it's 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 a good estimate. I mean, you, you've been on the market for three years since you debuted over at the uh, the IPCPR. Um, you when we first started the interview, you spoke a lot about retweaking some blends and trying to get some things going. So my question is is pretty simple. With so many, let's just call those administrative stumbling blocks when you're uh, uh, tweaking the blend, what has been a key to your success to getting out really across the United States? Because it's not like you're just concentrated, say, in the Northeast. When you go to your website, corneliusandanthony.com, uh, and you click on re- when, 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 when you click on the retailers, you can actually see... When I when I first look at that, I clicked on a few. I see success there, because in such a short amount of time, you're able to penetrate in multiple regions. You follow me? Yes, sir. I do. So, so my question, with with uh, with without using wor- uh, any word economy, is what has been a key factor having you gone through so many of those tweaks, having you still, like you said consider yourself a uh, pretty new company, you know, what has been a big key to the success? Because like I said, it looks like, you you know, to be in over 40 states within three years is a big feat within itself. Well, it's, it's you know, business is still all about relationships and people. Mm-hmm. And frankly, that that's the reason why we've had some success Courtney Smith has uh, a lot of good relationships in the industry. She knows all the brokers in the industry. Uh, she has a good reputation. Uh, my company has a good reputation. We, we like to think that if we tell you we're going to do something, we're going to do it. We guarantee our products. Uh, we're advertising our products. You'll see our advertisements in a cigar aficionado, which is not a cheap spin, frankly. Sure. Um, and, and you know, we we're at uh, we're supporting the brokers, um, and and that's you know whether it's through different types of promotions or you know within the the confines of of the way we're paying them. So I, I think that's had a lot to do with it. We've had uh, a lot of success with bloggers and and folks that have really spoke extremely highly of our products and, and I think that's another reason you know we made our way into the several top 10 sorry my my someone's dog. at the door <laughs> my my, 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 do, my my dog heard something about 12 blocks away probably so <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you see that interview from the UK yeah. news channel where the guy's kids are coming in the back and the, yeah, that's, the that's nanny's trying to usher that? Uh, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what's going on here. He'll chill out in a minute, I hope. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think all of those things can contribute to success and in, in gaining, you know, distribution. And that I've been in this game a long time, and and really the challenge that every manufacturer faces that's not, you know, one of the original big manufacturers is gaining distribution. Uh, it's it's gaining a reputation of doing what you say and saying what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, those things are really important because without that, you know, as a business owner, I'm, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing, sit down and spend a lot of time with somebody unless it's attached to a person that I know and I trust. And I, I really think that's the reason why we've had success because we've linked up with Folks that have good reputations, good, you know, brokers are, they've got their hands full. They've got plenty going on. But, you know, we try to keep ourselves in front of them at at, uh, top of mind. And, you know, we keep Todd on the road a lot. So, you know, it's it's just it's it's a lot of work. It's it's nothing that just happens by itself. It's there. There are not people calling me right now saying I want to buy your cigars. Sure. It's more about, you know, introducing the company, introducing my family 
introducing my employees and and doing what we say we're going to do. And if we're doing that consistently and we're treating people the way we want to be treated, it, it tends to to grow slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because usually when, when a shop uh, or when a brand goes to IPCPR, you know, they, they usually average, uh, you know, 20 shops every two months or so. And when you're looking at all this work, this looks like a existing company that's been around for at least a good five, six, seven years already. Well, frankly, you know, we, we've been around cigars for three years, but our business really, really didn't start until last March. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, it's everything that you see on that website, including the website, mm -hmm. uh, has been done in a year's time. Right, right. Well, at least you have a website. That's great. That's <laughs> that's that's a step in the right direction because because you can definitely get a uh, ton of information. Uh, for the listeners out there, you can go to corneliusandanthony.com and, ch and check it out and see if a retailer is near you. And I, yeah, I heard I, um, I, Rain Man's working on getting us uh, some samples. Yes, we need some samples, too. Do you have the address here? Do <laughs> you, you realize that samples, the samples are illegal now? You guys realize? I mean, I can send you samples for a fee. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> we, we have some ways around that, Steve. We'll talk after. <laughs> <laughs> Don't... Uh, I, I, I also heard that they are working on a, an exemption for cigar media, which, of course, is in everyone's best interest to, to be absolutely. able to do that. So. Uh, absolutely. I, I think I can probably send you guys stuff without, you know, going to FDA jail. But I'm kind of joking a little bit. Uh, so, Steve, uh, we do this thing where we play five questions uh, with our guests. Uh, really, that just means I ask you five random questions. So, are you ready to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks? Yes, let's have it. Three words to describe yourself. Oh my God! How about, oh my God. How about oh my oh God? Oh my God! That's good. I yes. like that. That's, if, that. that's it. Oh if my you God. were if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? A gun. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Uh. Dumb. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I've never played the game, but I always like to be up front. First. <laughs> Choose two celebrities to be your parents. Ooh. Um, Alive, dead, fictional, or non-fictional? Hmm. Two celebrities. That's a good question. You know, um, it would be cool to be Dale Earnhardt's son. I guess if I'm Dale Jr., I'm kind of digging that a little bit. Mm. Uh, I don't know how much of a celebrity that is. Oh, that's um, a celebrity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would think so. Turn left. Uh, you know, and um, Jennifer Aniston, that, and, and she comes to mind just because she's hot. So, that, you know. Yep, that's usually where the what place. happens. <laughs> yep. uh, she looks really good for her age, too. I don't, I don't disagree there. Uh, well, Steve, thank you very much for appearing on Stoey Geeks. We look forward to, uh, to smoking your cigars uh, and talking about them more on the show. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank, thank you much. Thank you. Coming up next, Debonair Ideal. Stay tuned. <laughs> 